The 17th of May is the International Day Against Homophobia and Transphobia. It's the day when we recognize the persecution and discrimination that LGBTI people have faced and continue to face throughout the world. And as much as I'd love to make a video on LGBTI issues, we're just not there yet. This is a video that's going to answer the more preliminary question of simply, what is discrimination? Now, I'm sure you're watching this, you have a general sense or at least a gut feeling of what discrimination is. But let's actually look into a little more detail. Now, what does discrimination mean? Well, according to the dictionary, it means an act of perceiving a difference, which is a pretty vague definition. But uh, I can use some examples to show that discrimination in many situations is totally, totally fine. So imagine you're getting a pizza. There's two choices, one with olives on it and another with pineapple on it. Now, if you don't like pineapple, but you like olives, you are gonna pick the one with olives. It's pretty obvious. But what you're doing is that you're discriminating against the pizza with pineapple in favor of the pizza with olives. Not that you have any ill will against this pizza with pineapple in it, you just like the ones with olives better. That's fine. That is a form of discrimination and that's totally fine. Now, likewise, let's say that you're hiring for a position, you need someone with years and years of experience doing programming. You know, you need an excellent programmer. And you have two candidates, one person with 10 years plus experience programming, and the other is fresh out of university. You're gonna discriminate against that person and go with the one with the years of experience because that's gonna fill, fill the need that you need. This form of discrimination is also totally fine. But those situations aren't what you typically think of when you talk about discrimination. And let's get into that because that's where the interesting part is. Well, the first legal analysis of the issue of discrimination, at least in the United States, came in what is now known as footnote four from a case from 1938. And it was a footnote, you know, wasn't made in part of the text, but what it said is that while generally courts will let government pass whatever law it wants, you know, it'll give a very easy test, there are certain times when the courts might need to give a much, more, a much higher scrutiny to make sure that the government is doing things in a proper manner. And the example it used in that footnote four is when there's a law that's directed at a discrete or insular minority. Now, what does that mean, discrete and insular minority? Well, the first part, discrete, means that this is a group of people that you can tell apart from other people. Like you can just see and be like, aha, these people are part of that group, not part of that group. And insular means that it's people that aren't integrated into normal society. So to give an example, left-handed people, you could tell, you know, by looking at them, oh, they're, they're different, they're discreet, but they're not insular. There's no left-handed community that is being affected or treated in a different way than other people are. But what this recognizes is that certain groups like racial minorities who are discreet and insular have been targeted and continue to be targeted. Now this test was developed in 1938. So it is, by today's standards, a bit limited. It doesn't include, for example, a discrimination against religion. Religion isn't uh, an inherent characteristic in that it's not like your skin color or your left-handedness or right-handedness. Um, it's something that can change, and that, and therefore, would not be included in this test, even though people often view the religion as much more fundamental to their character than which hand they write with. Another group that wouldn't be covered by this are people with mental illnesses who have faced a lot of discrimination throughout time. But they wouldn't qualify because they're not so much a discrete group in that mental illnesses range from people that have just slight uh, challenges in living their normal lives to people that aren't able to care for themselves. So this is a very broad group. Further, it's not so much an insular group in that a lot of these people don't live in their own separate communities, they live integrated with everyone else. And so it's not as easy to tell but the discrimination is real. So modern international human rights law has a different test. It uses something that's more developed. So international human rights law defines discrimination as distinguishing or restricting based on a certain characteristic for the purpose or result of infringing on one group's human rights when compared to another group. Now that definition, you're not gonna see in those exact words in any international human rights convention. Here you can see the more legalistic much more robust and much longer definition of discrimination from the Convention for the Elimination of Racial Discrimination. Now, one of the interesting parts of that definition I just gave you is this purpose or effect. And it gets to two different types of discrimination. There's de jure discrimination and de facto discrimination. De jure discrimination means by law, like you facially are saying, you know, like uh, blacks are not allowed to sit at the same counter as white people. That is de jure discrimination. 
de facto discrimination is where you're not going to say necessarily blacks aren't allowed to, but what, through whatever laws and policies are created, the net result is that blacks are still not sitting at that counter. An example of de jure discrimination would be a policy that someone would not hire women. That is de jure discrimination against women. You have selected them, targeted them, and you're discriminating against them. It's, you're infringing on their human rights. Now, a de facto discrimination would be to have a hiring policy where people have to be a certain height. Now, that sounds facially neutral. You know, there's nothing in there saying anything about women. But women tend to be shorter than men. And so by requiring a certain height to be able to work or to be employed uh, makes it more difficult for women to get higher than for men. That's an example that will result in de facto discrimination. That can be problematic or that could be okay. If that height requirement is actually necessary for the job that you're entailing that you want to hire these people for, then that's totally, that's totally fine. If you're going to hire a pilot, you're not going to hire a blind person. A sight is a necessary requirement of being a pilot. So sorry, blind people, but that's just simply not an option right now. Another form of discrimination is positive discrimination. This is more often known as affirmative action, but I'm going to use the human rights term, which is temporary special measures. So what does that mean? First off, temporary. Uh, how positive discrimination is always going to be a temporary thing. Second, it's going to be special. And I'll, I'll explain that actually in a second. And then the third measures means that it's a government policy that you're creating to promote this positive discrimination. Okay, so now why do you have temporary special measures? Why do people advocate for them? Well, it goes to that special reason. You're not just trying to promote one group over another group. That's not fair. What you're doing is you're recognizing that some groups have historically been discriminated against. And so what you do is create special measures, specific policies to counteract some of the discrimination that that group has felt. For example, if your parents, and your grandparents, and your great grandparents never went to university, it's simply going to be harder for you to go to university than someone else. You're not going to have a guide on knowing how to apply for universities. You're not going to even have a role model that you can just kind of follow in their steps. So it's simply going to be harder for you through no fault of your own. Further, in this situation, you haven't faced direct discrimination, but it's the historical discrimination that is putting you back. And that's what positive discrimination or temporary special measures is meant to mitigate and alleviate. In fact, the Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women uses the term accelerating de facto equality. Because again, the goal is to get this group that has been historically discriminated up to the level of the other group. Ultimately, the goal of human rights is that everyone gets to enjoy the full realization of their rights. And that's why fighting discrimination is so important to make sure that we aren't benefiting some groups while leaving other groups behind. That's it. If you've liked the video, please click subscribe for more from Insight Human Rights.